All right, we're back again. We're going to be talking about scatter plots today. I apologize for the attire. I just got done playing basketball against Benito Munoz. Ask him who won. All right, so here's our problem. The table gives the weight in tons and estimates the fuel economy in miles per gallon for several cars. So we have essentially our XY chart right here. They're going to give us data points, and this is actually number one from your homework. You're welcome. And we've even given you the graph to set up. So we've given you the units on the X and the Y axis, and so now it's just plotting points. Everybody should be able to do this. We essentially have our X and our Y values to plot. So what I'm going to do first is just plot these points. Everybody should be able to do this. Uh, if you are watching this with the worksheet in front of you, feel free to do it along with me. 1.3 comma 29. So if there's 0.5 and there's 1, 0.3 right around the middle. Okay, so if that's 2.5 or maybe 1.3, 29. Okay, I'm almost to 30. Sounds good. 1.4, we're a little closer to 1.5 and we're at 24. So we're starting to go down. We're a little bit below the 25. Next, 1.5, we're actually at 23, so we're a little bit more right in the middle. Keep going. At 2, we don't know. So we're going to come back to 2. Oh, I skipped 1.8, we got 21. So again, we're a little bit to the east of 1.5 and a half. If I could count, that'd be great. Then we have 2, we don't know. 2.1 is at 17. A little bit in between 20 and 15. And then lastly, 2.4, we're at 15. Okay, so hopefully your plots look something similar to mine. And again, if they're a little bit different, that doesn't make too much of a big deal. We may have a slightly different equation of a line fit, and that's all right, as long as we have something similar for our projections. Now, we just took care of the graph. Check. Nailed it. All right. Correlation. Now, you can take a look at these plots and they start to make sense of is there an upward trend or a downward trend or does it just look like chicken pox all over the place? If there is a downward trend, which is what we have here, that's called a negative correlation. Okay? Think money. If you see investing and money is going down, that has a negative uh, impact on your life. So, negative correlation. Obviously, if your money is rising, what's up? That's a positive correlation that you'll be using. If it's just all over the place, like I said, it looks like chicken pox, that is no correlation. So I have a negative correlation going on here. And just make sure that makes sense. It says weight in tons and estimates the fuel economy in miles per gallon of several cars. Okay, that's realistic. So the heavier the car gets, the less fuel economy. If you got a truck, you're like, amen. All right, so let's draw our line of best fit. Well, first let's write in correlation. We have a negative correlation. All right, now I recommend using an actual uh, straight edge. I got mine right here, what's up? So I'm gonna try to find what's really an average line. I want it to almost be an estimate that is the closest thing to a line that kind of summarizes what's going on. I like mine right about here. Not the best, don't judge. All right, so if we want to find the actual line of best fit, we want to try to find two points that are at least closest or on the actual line we just drew. So it looks like mine that are the closest are these two, okay? So I look, this one was just in between 1.5 and 2.0. So that looks like we're looking at this point, 1.8 comma 21. So there's my first point. Second point is just past two. And we got 2.1 and 17. So, good news, we're back in our wheelhouse. We have two points. This is what we've been using for the last couple weeks. Once you have two points, you can do everything you need to get to slope intercept. Find the slope, put it in point slope, put it transition into slope intercept by isolating y. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, I'll be narrating what I do aloud. Again, if you pick two different points, your slope will be different, and that is perfectly fine. I'm going to take my y2 minus my y1, I don't know if you can see, over my x2 minus my x1. Okay? Now, when I get here, all I do is subtract, and I get the negative 4 over 
0.3, okay? Now, from here, you do have options. From here, if you want, you can leave it like this. You can get rid of the decimal. Now, again, we're dealing with real world figures, so you have the option to actually make it a decimal and plug that into your actual form. For me, I'm gonna keep it like this. I do not have a calculator, as if we're actually doing the problem together in class. If you don't have a calculator, you can still do it. It's not an excuse. So there's my slope. I'm gonna select this point with this slope, okay? So y minus y1 equals my slope times x minus my x1. Is everybody okay? Now, when you start to distribute this, it may look like a really nasty thing, but good things are in store for us. Watch what happens. I get a y minus 21, negative 4 over 0.3x. Now, if you're nervous about this, what do you notice? 0.3 and 1.8? Yeah. What's up? Cancel town, baby. 3 cancels with 18, so 0.3 cancels with 1.8, and this becomes a 6. And we get a minus, I'm sorry, a plus 24 because we have the minus the negative. Everybody good? There's no one responding, so I'm going to keep going. Isolate y, add 21. Final answer. y equals negative 4 over 0.3x plus 45. Now that is my slope intercept equation for line of best fit for my data set. A lot of work, but it wasn't any skills we didn't know how to do. It was just understanding the process. Now our last question asks, what's the mile per gallon for a car weighing two tons? Now understand there's two ways you can get this. First off, they just told you two tons. You look at your chart or at your graph, that's your x variable. Weight is your x variable. So the first way you can figure it out you just created an equation that can project any value with one of its pairs. I can plug in two here and solve. Now I encourage you to do that, but I don't have a calculator to help me, so I'm actually gonna use the other way. If I trust my line of best fit, look where 2.0 is, right about there. So it should be, if I check it later with the calculator, it should be right under 20 miles per gallon. So you can always check to see if your line of best fit is agreeing with your equation. If I come up with some crazy answer that's way off, I did something wrong. Okay, that's quick, scatter plot, positive, negative, no correlation, line of best fit, you name it, we got it. Real quick in eight minutes. Later.